everybody, it's Abby with Creative at Home, and uh, today we are going to be painting the painting Winter in Paris. Um, you can see the example here. Uh, you've purchased a kit from me, and that's how you're making your way to this video. So thank you so much for, for doing that, and we're ready to paint. Uh, if you didn't have a kit purchased from me, uh, we'll be going through the supplies here in the next segment once I switch over my camera. But wanted to just make sure that we were ready to go, and I'm so glad that you're painting with me today. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, here we are, ready to go. I have my workspace all ready. I uh, have protection underneath my canvas. Uh, I like to paint flat, prefer to paint that way. If you prefer an easel, um, you're welcome to paint that way as well. Um, but if you're painting flat, just make sure you've got something under there to protect it. I have my palette, um, and we're actually gonna paint with uh, acrylic paint today um, on a canvas board, which I'll get into, but we have black paint, white, brown, green and red. So um, go ahead and get your paints dispensed uh, and ready for that. Uh, feel free if I'm going too fast through anything at any point in this video to pause me so that uh, you can get caught up or fast forward if uh, you're you're ahead of the game. So um, we're going to be painting today on an eight, uh, 11 by 14 canvas panel and uh, it's going to be or in the landscape orientation. Um, I have a paper towel here just to blot my brushes, uh, a cup of water for rinsing my brushes, and then um, the brushes that come with your kit should be all set. You'll have a sponge um, for painting the background and then which will replace uh, this brush if I don't drop them. Um, this is a three quarters inch wash brush. You can use your sponge that I've included for that. Um, here is a larger number 10 round brush um, that we're going to use and a number six round brush, so a little bit smaller version of that. And then finally our detail brush um, which is uh, a number three um, round brush. So you should have everything or a an acceptable substitute uh, in your kit and uh, we should be ready to go. Um, all right, so the first thing that we are going to do for this winter in Paris paint painting is we're going to go ahead and work on that background. Um, so we're using white, our white paint and we're going to go ahead and just paint this background white. Um, so your canvas is a little whiter than mine. I like to reuse my canvases. I paint a lot more than most people and uh, if I'm doing demos like this sometimes I'll reuse some paintings I did in previous demos. So mine looks a little bit more colorful than yours but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paint this with some white paint um, and you'll want to do the same. That'll give you um, a good painting background to just kind of prime that canvas up and uh, make sure that um, the colors blend nicely and and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that. Um, there's no real technique to doing this, just wanting to make sure that you're uh, getting good coverage. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint that whole thing white. And then once we get a good coat of white on there, we'll go back and start adding and blending in some other colors. So. Just want to get a good coat of white on here. Then we just kind of want to make, this is a, a night, uh, cloudy, snowy day in, in Paris. Um, 
So we're just going to add some kind of, the sky is going to be gray and have different colors from the sun and that kind of thing. So we're just going to start blending in very small amounts. So I'm going to just grab, you know, just the, you can see here, I'm grabbing some black paint on just the corner of my brush. It still has all the white in there. Um, and I'm just going to start working that paint in with the white, okay? To kind of give the sky some depth. And then I'm going to do the same thing with some brown. Just to give it a little bit. And if you think it's too dark, you can always add in more white. It'll help you spread it out a little bit. Don't fret here, but we want it to be, you know, fairly pale, but adding some depth into um, there. And you can do some with the green there. Grab some more white. And if you do this while it's wet, kind of go at different angles, it'll start to spread everything out really well. Um, you can come over with, add some pink tones in here with that black. Keep spreading it out. Add some white in there if it gets too dark. Again, these are just very small amounts of paint. Just want to add some depth to that sky. I feel like this brown is nice up here. And this is ultimately going to be your background. So again, it's not going to be the end all be all of your painting. Um, so you're going to paint other things in the foreground, hence the name. <laughs> um, but uh, just want to go ahead and give it some interest so that it's not just a, a flat white background. Um, no real science to it, just kind of adding those in there. Some more white. I'm gonna use a lot of white on this one. Okay. Okay, when you've got your nice pretty background, so you can see it just turns out a really nice, pretty color. Get a bit of white that I want to thin out there. There we go. Okay, so I have some interest and fun in the background there. Um, Alright, so I'm going to use the slightest bit of black in with my white paint. We're going to start um, painting this Eiffel Tower, okay? So we just want to, so you can see I'm mixing in just the, it was just the teeniest bit. So we really want that very pale, um, very pale gray. It was no more than probably a, a speck of, of white. Okay, and we want this to be very, very pale. Um, so we're going to paint this Eiffel Tower and it's gonna come down here, kind of in the center. So we'll have a line here 
and it's kind of an open A, so we're just going to kind of have it come down and off that one. Okay. Okay, so we have that. And then up at the top here, we're going to have one of the first levels. And then towards the center, it's going to turn into an A, and you want that crossbar to extend farther out. So let's see if I turn it to the side. It's a little hard to see on here, but I'm just painting. And I actually think I might darken up that gray. Because I do, I want it to be in the background, but I also want to be able to see it. <laughs> and I'm having trouble seeing it here. That's a little bit better. So we want it to be a foggy day, but we don't want it to be to us not know that it's Paris. There, that's a little bit better. Okay, so I'm extending it out. Okay. All right, and then um, we want to add kind of an arch underneath here as well because of those four legs. So we have that. There we go. Give it that perspective. Okay. So we have our shadow of the Eiffel Tower on our background. Okay, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to pick, I'm not rinsing this gray out, but I'm just going to pick up a little bit more white and start kind of blending in some X's to give it just a little bit of texture. Okay. Same thing on this side. So if you look at it, you've got some interest and in, in texture there. You can do the same. And here. So now we have that in our background, and what we're going to do is pause here. Um, I'm going to take a little break, pause the video. You guys can want to make sure that this canvas gets all the way dry. Uh, so we will see you back in a few moments.
Welcome back. I'm here with my dry canvas and uh, we're ready to to get started. Um, one thing that I think might help some of you is to get a straight edge for this very next step. So pause me if you need to run and get that. Um, but we are going to do some guidelines here for our perspective. So um, if you see on this painting here in your instructions, um, you have perspective. So we're going to create these perspective lines. Um, and the way we're going to do that is about two and a half inches up from the bottom of our canvas, um, which puts us in the center here. Um, puts us right about here on this line. Um, all right, so we're gonna, this, this is the center point on our canvas. I'm gonna go about a half inch over and I'm just gonna put a little bit, a little tiny line of dot of black, okay? And then I'm gonna, since we went a half inch from the center, I'm gonna go a half inch from the center on that one and do another one, okay? So now we have those two line, two dots. And if it's easier for you with a pencil, you can feel free to sketch this. Um, in fact, that might be the best route for me um, is to go through, some help if I had a sharpened pencil. Um, and we're basically gonna connect the dots. So, um, this is like perspective for, for dummies. Um, I did project like this in, in uh, high school art and a straight edge really comes in handy. So um, I'm just gonna run my straight edge from the dot, the right hand side dot um, to the corner. And we're just gonna connect that and uh, that's going to be the line for the bottom of our trees, basically the bottom, our tree line. Okay, so that's the one side and it's a little hard. Let me see if I can get it to show up. You can see it there. Just a pencil line on the canvas there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So from that dot that we drew to the corner of the canvas gives us our other piece of line. So the trees will come this way down the line and this is this under piece here is the street um, and you're looking down the street. Okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our largest round brush that we have um, mine's a little sticky. Get that nice point. And we're going to paint tree trunks on the right of my canvas, which will ultimately be this side here. So this is where it might help you to make um, I'm sorry, it's going to be over here. I'm getting my sides messed up. <laughs> so we're working on this side of the canvas. Um, so you want the trees to be about three inches. This is again where I think it might be helpful to grab the, the ruler. So you're looking to be about three inches at the end here. So we're going to want to paint some tree trunks starting three inches from the bottom and they're going to go down to about an inch high here or three quarters of an inch. Let's go three quarters of an inch. Okay, so that's another line that you can connect. to help yourself when you're painting. So if you paint that, 
Okay. So you can see that I have two lines. I have one line here that's the street edge and the other line here is the line that I'm going to start painting tree trunks. Okay? So we're going to use our brown paint and start just painting tree trunks straight up and down here. Okay? We want this whole this thing to be a whole forest of trees. So just start with the brown and we're going to this is pretty much solid but we want it to look straight up and down so it's not like I just want to paint this area in we want it to be still stripey so you want to use your brush mark, your brush strokes to be straight up and down, okay? But it's pretty solid, and then we're gonna add some uh, <laughs> some uh, shading as we get further away and closer, and all that stuff. So we're going up and down. You can start to see it come together. And again, it's not exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. Trees aren't exactly the same height. But I'm holding relatively consistent pressure on my brush strokes so that the lines are pretty much the same width from the top to the bottom. Okay. All right. Okay, you can fill in any kind of holes you have. And then we're going to start just blending in some black on this side to darken that up and make it look more like the perspective. Okay, and that's not a lot and I'm not rinsing my brush out so just adding some black and kind of spreading that up and down as we go down and letting it fade into just the regular brown and here I can rinse my that black out and then pick up some more brown just to kind of give it a little bit more of a second coat as it starts to dry. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to kind of want to start blending in um, some white into the same paint look. can add, now that it's kind of blended, you can give it some stripes that are lighter. And 
in there. And then come back over with Just kind of adding some striping look. Okay, so I think we're good on those trees. You want to keep working on getting them to have some variation feel free. Um, and now we're going to switch over to the medium sized round brush. Um, and I'm going to start working on the leaves. Uh, so this is going to be a mixture of brown, red, black, and white to the trees up here. And again, we want the trees, everything is going to come to to this point here um, and so if you use your your pencil just for kind of a guide so we want the trees to come I would say maybe here and end up oh another two inches above the center here. So if we connect that line that gives you a basis if you can see it here of how we're gonna build these leaves. Okay, so if we start with brown and we'll just kind of start building that base. Okay, and if you want to, you can even use this bigger brush to make it go a little faster. And then as we, oops, too much water. Okay, you can kind of just fill this space in here. And if you use the top, as opposed to the edge, you'll get some of those smaller pieces. And again, we want to kind of add some Okay. And just kind of keep moving this in here. some of that red and give it a nice look and then we'll blend it in with the black and the white like we did with the other one I'd be amazed at how it comes together so picked this painting this month because I think we're all so desperate to travel and it makes me think back to college when I spent some time over here and we uh, we had to climb down the Eiffel Tower on the outside because we didn't want to wait for the elevator and I swear it was the scariest one of the scariest things that I have ever done. Um, I do not recommend that. I highly recommend the Eiffel Tower, <laughs> but I do not recommend walking down the outside of it because you don't want to wait for the elevator. Um, of course, who knows how you can get up there now, um, but that's my little fun fact is do not go down the outside, um, but I highly recommend Paris. I was there in the summer though. 
and it was eons ago but I think we're all looking to to travel so you can start to see how that's coming together so I'm gonna switch back to a smaller brush here and start blending in this red paint here I never dry it off on the handle um, but just kind of adding that in all around here you can see how it'll start to blend it up and you can scoot it out and give it some variation here because you know trees aren't straight <laughs> You want to use that perspective as a guide, but just kind of go through here. some tunes on and dot away here. Okay, so we've got our red and we've got our brown, and now we're going to start blending in. Um, I'm going to rinse a little bit of my paint out, and I'm going to start with the black, because I think black is easier to bring back than it is, um, like to, it's just, I think it's just easier to go lighter. Um, okay, so some of this you'll kind of want to like I feel like we need some some branches so if you can kind of have a branch come up and maybe out this way and you can have some coming up here and then we're going to go back over them with some of the other colors so that they are visible but not like you don't want them to be in the forefront you want them to be kind of mixed in there with your just kind of shadowy brushes or branches brushes so you can see how if we use that Keep pushing that up there. 
And you can see how it's starting to add a little bit of depth. And then you can maybe do one up here too, but we're going to work on lightening up this section, but I feel like there's just some some dark spots that we need to add in here um, as we're lightening it up and making it look like there's more than just a block of trees. Okay. All right, we can add some different shadowing up here. Just going to kind of make them darker here. Some brown. All right. Okay, so now we're awfully dark and fallish looking. So I think we're going to add in the white here and start lightening things up. So get your white paint and we're going to do the same thing here and start blending in that white paint. And you can see it makes that pretty. And this takes a little time. I mean, this doesn't happen over um, like you want to make sure you if you have to go back, it gets too light and you have to go back and add those dark highlights in again. It's not the end of the world. We just want to make sure that we're getting there. So you can see how it's already starting to lighten itself right up. Okay. There we go. Pick up some more of that dark. So as you're getting closer to the edges here, you can start backing off on the amount of white that you put so that it's a lighter, um, blending and you have more of a red tone as opposed to, you still want that white, but you'll you can make them kind of further apart so that more of that red and the brown and the, the darker colors shine through a little bit more. This is the, the section where if you need to come back over and you get too much white, if you need to come back over with a darker color, um, might make more sense. Okay. Or if something's too dry or whatever. Whatever it is. Okay. All right, I think we're 
promise there. And these, not so bad. You guys are almost there. Look at those trees. Those trees looked a little scary. <laughs> It can be. I think just the perspective and hopefully we gave you some good tips on how to get that perspective down and all that kind of stuff. So let's give it a, a look. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape on how blended I am and how much dark and light and all of those pieces. Um, may want to add some more dark in this section here. I feel like we're a little brighter than maybe I'd like. Okay. Alright, so we have that and that side done, all set. And we're going to start on the evergreens that are on the side here. Um, okay, so we have our visual point. We're going to work on some more of that perspective. Um, we're going to, um, these are going to be triangles that go down and they're not going to go as high. Basically, they're going to go about the same height as, um, your tree trunks over here on this side, maybe a little bit higher. So we'll probably go about three and a half inches um, here on this one. And I'm going to draw it, but they're going to be smaller um, as we get here. So I'm going to have them end at about uh, a half inch above our line. So we're just going to draw that line there. And then we know that we can paint our green triangles in between that line and it takes the the guesswork out of it. So we'll start here and then we'll have them go down. Okay? All right. So in order to do that, we're going to mix a little bit of green and we're going to darken it up with a little bit of black. So black goes a long way. So I really just kind of stuck my knife in there you can use your brush. Um, but we just are kind of, it was just sticking my knife in there and you can see how dark it got um, that quickly. So just going to go with that shape or with that color and we're going to start with our smallest detail brush um, the smallest round brush that we have and we're going to paint triangles um, as we go and then we'll add some more of those those things so our first one um, is going to kind of go off the page but we'll have it go like that and like that. Okay, so I'm just painting the outline right now. Okay, and it can overlap a little bit um, and will be about um, an inch or so in between each one. Okay, and we're looking to have one, two, three, four, five, um, three to five kind of visually here. Um, and then we'll start getting them um, a little closer and having them overlap. So there's four. There you go. 
okay and some of these we can straighten up a little and it'll it'll be good so okay so we're going to just gonna go ahead and and paint these guys in as we go to correct the angle a little you can so they look like they're growing straight up and down that one looked a little sideways I'm just gonna kind of extend that angle a little make it a little wider on one side so that it looks looks right. Okay. And maybe that one too. one here. Get that. Okay, so we have our trees. Um, let's see here. Okay, so um, all right, so we're gonna use this this plain green and just kind of start working these through to add some more texture and color to this look here. That same movement that we used to do the leaves over here. Just gonna get those working. through this one and then we're going to add we can add light and dark accents on these as well and we are just keep dabbing those on I guess we could call these Happy trees. <laughs> Happy winter trees. We like happy trees. Bob. That's our ode to Bob. There we go. And I'm 
just kind of I'm kind of mixing these two greens together and doing a little bit each to give it a little bit more. Interest. These little ones can get a little tricky, so just start at the top lightly. Okay. All right, so then I'm gonna kind of go through and take out these lines that I drew, if you can still see them. Try not to stick your hand in in your art. Okay, so I am going to brush off some of this, and then I'll brush off the rest of it when it's dry. Um, but just kind of go through and make sure we've got it all covered the way we want, and then. Work on these a little bit more. These guys need a little more love, I think. What we can do also, and I'll show you to help with the Okay, so I'm just going to grab a touch of white. I'm not rinsing out my brush, but I'm grabbing a touch here. And I'm just going to kind of, actually you can almost blot it off on your, but I just want to add a little bit of shading up here to help with that snowstorm look. We just want to kind of give them a dusting. little bit of brightening up on just the one side. And you can see it gives it a little bit more interest here. Just grab some more. Okay, I got a little light add some more in there. It's not an exact science. It's art. Just want to make sure that when you stand back from it that you're happy with the way it looks. And sometimes you have to do that. You have to just kind of take a step back and say, yep, it looks better. It's an impressionist painting since those are our French friends. Okay, I feel like this one needs a little bit more white. Okay. So, you can hold that up and you've got All that stuff looking pretty good. So I'm gonna also work on this little dot here. All right, so we're gonna add some snow in here. I wanna make sure that we have that working. So with a very clean, so I'm going to get my brush good and clean, my green brush, um, the middle sized one. 
and I'm gonna start dabbing like we've been doing with the tree branches I'm gonna start dabbing the street with the snow okay and I want to cover it up um, looks like I've still got a little bit of pink in there so get a really clean one actually start over here because I know that's drier um, and I want to kind of overlap this these trees a little because in a lumpy way this is not a straight line meaning a straight line because snow drifts and things like that are not exact so you can see how I'm covering up Kind of those rough edges that I had and making it look like the snow is right up against those trees. Drifting can drift a little and it's just a way to touch it up. Okay. Alright. Let's keep going all the way down. And then we're gonna do the same thing along these trees here too, but again, I wanna give that enough time to dry. Uh, mine's still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna work over here in this area first. It can be a little chunky um, snow falls and there we go and it all comes to starts to come together here in the home stretch Side's good. I'm gonna head over here. I'm just gonna give myself a little space. I want that green to dry as much as possible. I think I'll be okay, but last thing I want to do is get wet green paint into my acrylic here. This is the one time where I don't want it to blend in the whole painting, so just gonna keep it going. If you do find a wet spot that you did not know about um, and it ends up getting colored the way that you don't want it, um, don't continue to mess with it. Um, you want to let it dry all the way and then um, once it is dry, you will be able to paint over it. So, for example, I don't know if any of you noticed, I had a black dot there. Um, well, white shouldn't really cover black, but because that black dot, I allow that black dot to dry, it, um, it completely covered it. So you can see there's actually still a little bit of it there, <laughs> but we got it. Um, 
And same thing with this background. We it was more of a rainbowish background, but because we let it dry, it's going to accept this white paint um, and have it be whiter relative to the other ones. So um, if you if I get into here and I blend some of the green in, it's not the end of the world. Um, I'm going to let it dry and then I come back and just paint over. But I think we're going to be okay. All right. So we've got that's my one trouble spot there. Okay. So I have my winter in Paris painting. Um, gonna keep working on the snow in case there are places where I need it as it dries. Um, but for today's lesson, we are all finished. Um, so I want to thank you so much for painting with me. Uh, you can choose to sign your artwork. Um, I'm going to wait. I always sign mine down in this corner because it's still wet here. Um, but sign your artwork. I encourage you to take pride in it and display it. Um, in places in your house. It's great to have uh, those kind of kind of spots where you can say, yep, I did that artwork. So um, I encourage you to try some of my other kits and events. This um, painting here is actually part of one of my clubs that I'm offering. Uh, we have monthly clubs um, for kids and families and um, Adults, and this is actually January's painting for the uh, travel and paint and sip um, club that we offer. It's $15 a month. Um, does not include supplies, but it's $15 a month. You get a live painting opportunity the third Friday evening of the month at 8 p.m. as well as access to the recording. So it's a really fun way to experience this stuff with your family. Um, you can see the first six months, including this painting, on my website at uh, www.creativeathomeart.com as well as the Kids Club and the Family Painting Clubs um, and all the other kits that I offer. So hopefully you get to paint with me again in some capacity and I look forward to it and again appreciate your time. So all of you have a great day. Oh, and please um, like and share this video, um, comment on it, as well as I love to see everybody's finished products. So if you want to share those at the hashtag um, creative at home art, that's how I, I love to see everybody's artwork. So well, everyone have a great evening. Thanks so much for watching.